The downing of Ukraine International Airlines flight PS752 is karma for the downing of Malaysian Airlines flight MH17, according to the Kremlin, while the US is planning a Chernobyl for Russia and Putin says the local Donbas militia is getting support from sympathetic states. Welcome to Stop Fake, the place where we debunk Russian disinformation and set the record straight about Ukraine. Disinformation never stops, but neither do we. So let's get to it. Russian media began peddling diverse versions of what brought down Ukraine International Airlines flight PS752, the Ukrainian Boeing 737 passenger jet, within hours of its tragic crash near Tehran. A leading narrative being promoted by Russian disinformation is that the U.S. shot the plane down in order to start a war in the Middle East. The Kremlin would not be the Kremlin if it did not blame the United States for all the world's troubles. Russia's federal news agency RIA announced that the Ukrainian plane was shot down by an American drone in response to Iran shelling U.S. bases in Iraq. The monarchist orthodox site Sargrad also blamed the United States for downing the Ukrainian jet by citing a Russian Duma member of parliament, former prosecutor of occupied Crimea Natalia Poklonska, who said that crashes like this do not happen by accident and wars and conflicts are intended to produce a global hegemon. On. Komsomolskaya Pravda puts forward three possible causes of the crash, a technical malfunction aboard the plane, terrorism, or a missile. They also plant a conspiracy seed by writing, quote, In the East they can hold a grudge for a very long time, all the while nurturing plans for revenge. But to assume that Tehran would suddenly bury its own citizens is also far-fetched, but does not exclude the interests of third forces that could take advantage of the explosive situation in the region to add oil to the already burning fire in the Middle East. The downing of Malaysian Airlines Flight MH17 also surfaced in Russian coverage of the Ukrainian jet crash. Remember, Flight MH17 was shot down in July of 2014 by a Russian anti-aircraft Buk missile over eastern Ukraine under the control of Russian proxy forces, but the Russian media ecosystem still blames the downing of MH17 on Ukraine, a fake narrative that Stopfake has debunked several times. Tsargrad, in particular, tries to draw parallels between the two events, citing social networks as the source, and the publication declares the Ukrainian jet crash was karma for MH17. Another Tsargrad article yet again points the finger of blame at America, writing, quote, The U.S. is launching a war in the region and staging a situation where the opposing side is shooting down a civilian plane. Citing unnamed Iranian sources, some Russian media speculate that the Ukrainian airliner could have been shot down by a missile launched by an American drone. Layrex.ua wrote, The credibility of this version is borne out by the MQ-1 Predator UAV drone found in the vicinity of Tehran, a drone that is only used by the United States military. Now, Tsargrad was clearly the most prolific producer of fakes about the crash of the Ukrainian jet. One of their fake stories even declared that the plane crashed because it was actually very old and claimed that because of company greed at Ukraine International Airlines, they decided to exploit the plane to the fullest. But in fact, the Boeing 737 was relatively new, just a bit over three years old. Its maiden flight took place on June 21, 2016, and Ukrainian International Airlines had purchased the craft directly from the Boeing plant in Seattle. This particular plane was a favorite among Air Ukraine International Airline pilots because it included modern state-of-the-art equipment. The plane was a symbol of the company's capacity to recover from the severe crisis brought on by Russia's war in eastern Ukraine. Russia is facing a new Chernobyl disaster, warned Sargrad Television, which is affiliated with the Russian Orthodox Church and Russia's security forces. Earlier this week, after the Zaporizhia South Ukrainian nuclear power plant's third reactor shut down briefly on January the 4th, Sargrad declared the U.S. is preparing an atomic apocalypse for Russia using Ukraine. According to Tsargrad, the shutdown was caused by the American nuclear fuel that the power plant uses. American fuel for Ukraine's nuclear power plants remains a favorite source of scaremongering by Russian disinformation. Dire predictions of nuclear doom and gloom for Ukraine began in the Russian press nearly six years ago in 2014, when Ukraine signed a number of agreements expanding the amount of nuclear fuel purchased from the American company Westinghouse. The contract was meant to reduce Ukraine's reliance on Russia, who provided nuclear fuel for Ukraine's atomic energy plants for many years. At that time, the Russian foreign ministry called the contracts unacceptable, politically biased, and a dangerous experiment which would be a catastrophe for Ukraine. Since then, Russia has vehemently opposed the expansion of Ukrainian-American nuclear cooperation and launched countless stories depicting apocalyptic scenarios that await Ukraine for using nuclear fuel from countries other than Russia.
but the temporary shutdown of the South Ukrainian nuclear power plant's third reactor on January the 4th was in no way connected to American fuel. This particular power plant began using Westinghouse fuel way back in 2005. In July 2018, the third reactor was completely converted to Westinghouse fuel. And in December of 2019, Energo Atom, the Ukrainian state company that operates all four of Ukraine's nuclear power plants, gave the South Ukrainian power plant permission to use the fuel for industrial rather than experimental purposes. Ukraine's efforts to diversify fuel sources for its atomic energy plants has been hugely opposed by Moscow and subjected to waves of Russian disinformation. Despite this onslaught, Energo Atom continues to expand its cooperation with Westinghouse. Currently, a mixed system of Russian and American nuclear fuel assemblies is being tested at five more reactors. In the near future, all of them will switch to fuel supplies from Westinghouse, further reducing Ukraine's dependence on Russia. Now, how dependent was Ukraine on Russian sources of nuclear fuel? Well, in 2012, more than 90% of the fuel for Ukraine's nuclear reactors came from Russia. But by 2019, Ukraine purchases 43% of its nuclear fuel from Westinghouse, losing almost 50% of a market to a competitor seems like a good reason to invest in scare tactics. But still, why is Russia so opposed to Ukraine using nuclear fuel from other suppliers, in this case Westinghouse? Well, according to Volodymyr Lysnichenko, the director general of the South Ukrainian nuclear power plant, Ukraine transferring to industrial use of American nuclear fuel means that other countries, such as Bulgaria, India, Iran, China, and the Czech Republic, that have operating Soviet-era reactors, can follow suit without problems. If Ukraine can diversify its nuclear fuel sources and become energy independent, so can other countries. During his annual year-end press conference in 2019, Russian President Vladimir Putin told Ukrainian correspondent Roman Simbolyuk that the military forces in Ukraine's eastern Donbass region fighting against the Ukrainian government are local militias. Putin said their heavy equipment, such as tanks and artillery, come from structures and states who sympathize with them, but this is their equipment, not foreign. Look, there is plenty of evidence, not only that Russia's proxy forces in Donbas possess Russian weaponry, but that Russian military personnel are also there. Since the war began in the spring of 2014, a number of Russian soldiers have been captured in eastern Ukraine and were returned to Russia via prisoner for hostage exchanges. For example, a Russian army tank crew member who was severely injured in the fighting in Donbas told the Russian news outlet Novaya Gazeta about his combat experiences in Ukraine, including how his tank unit painted over the emblems on their vehicles before redeploying to Ukraine. And Simon Ostrovsky, a professional journalist who was working for the news outlet Vice at the time, published an impressive video documentary in 2015 tracing the journey of a Russian soldier from his home in Siberia into Ukraine and back. More recently, in August of 2019, a research group known as Forensic Architecture released a report on Russian military involvement in the Battle of Ilovaisk five years earlier. The evidence was compiled for submission to the European Court of Human Rights. The report provided evidence that weapons and equipment manufactured by Russia and used exclusively by the Russian military wound up in eastern Ukraine, despite the fact that it had never been exported to Ukraine. Even if someone wants to ignore the evidence that Russian convoys inside of Ukraine included the T-72B3 tank that was only operated by the Russian army, the most important question is, from where do the Russian proxy forces in eastern Ukraine get their supplies of ammunition, fuel, and spare parts? Well, Russian disinformation has an answer, actually two answers. First, Russia has never explained how the ammunition and other logistics necessary for war get into the hands of their proxy forces in Ukraine. But at the same time, Russia's representative to the International Court of Justice in The Hague did claim that the military forces in eastern Ukraine found heavy weapons in abandoned mines. Now, these would have to be extremely large mines given that Russia's proxy forces admit to possessing as many as 700 tanks and armored personnel carriers. And if you believe Putin, these are local militias with 700 tanks. I don't know about you, but a militia with 700 tanks really isn't a militia anymore, but that's a different story. Now, before you think that Russia's proxy forces probably stole them from a Ukrainian depot, there simply is no evidence of such a large number of Ukrainian armored vehicles available for capture by Russian proxy forces when the war began. However, beginning in August 2014 through to February 2018, the Russian Federation has sent over 70 humanitarian convoys to Ukraine's Donbass and at least four more in 2019. 
The self-proclaimed Luhansk and Donetsk republics in eastern Ukraine don't have functioning airports or other kinds of ports, but they do share a land border with only one foreign country, Russia, whose sympathetic government could be the source of heavy weaponry used to shore up their occupation of eastern Ukraine, with local militia, of course. That's it for this week. You can find much more dissected disinformation on our website, stopfake.org. Be vigilant, look out for fakes, and if you spot any disinformation about Ukraine, forward it to us for a truth autopsy. I'm Marco Supran, and this is Stop Fake. Thanks for watching.